What's up, my people? How you doing? Back in. My name is Dalton. This is my channel. And uh, we're going to check out, this is going to be a reaction video. We're going to check out a video. And uh, it's, I guess, Audit the Audit. Uh, uh, or Audit the Police. And basically, I've been wanting to do this one for a while. Just had delays, delays, delays. But we're going to do this. Okay. You gotta excuse me, my allergies are messing with me, so. But uh, here we go. And this basically is about a pastor who gets uh, a cop sued after having an innocent man arrested. Okay, so let's check this out. <laughs> Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers freedom of speech, public nuisance, and identifications, and is brought to us by Lackluster's YouTube channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. On the morning of April 18th, 2021, Titus Hartford stood in front of the Calvary Chapel in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and held up a sign that read, The Apostle Paul taught the opposite of what Jesus taught, while the congregation drove past and into the church parking lot to attend Sunday service. As Mr. Hartford stood on a public sidewalk next to the church parking lot entrance, he greeted a parking lot attendant and informed him of why he was there. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Doing well. What is the purpose of that? I'm trying to, I'm trying to lead people to Jesus by correcting some of the oppositions to his teachings. I can't really get kicked off of public property, so I. Reckon I'll just stay here in the safe zone. Well, I'm in the middle of, I mean, this is not the time to do it. This, oh, but later. Um, tonight, this evening. Now is the only time convenient for me. Well then, uh, I guess. the truth. Hey, buddy. Hey, hey. What's going on? How are you? Good. Hey, man, how are you today? I'm doing well. What's your name? I'm Darren. I'm, choos I'm choosing not to, uh, uh, reveal that at this time. That's okay. I was just wanting to introduce myself. What can I help you with today, man? Um, just help me get my message out. You know, it's great that you have your theological and doctrinal belief, but do you really think this is the best place to try to get that yeah. message out? Why? Because this is a church that's popular. Which teaches the Word of God where He changes people's lives. So why would you Maybe what? there's people who want to go forward in their relationship with Jesus. Yeah, man, you know, and I know you're smart enough to where I see that you're standing on private, uh, on public property, it's a sidewalk. But man, can we not just agree today, maybe not to have this happen while I have our congregation. I'm a shepherd, right? So... Um, a hireling. Uh, no, I'm called by God, brother. Um, so uh, we don't the do reason, hirelings here. The reason you don't teach the teachings of Jesus is because you flee when you see all the wolves coming in here. Uh, I don't flee from anything, but I'm standing here in front of a person that I feel might be a wolf. So I'm going to ask you very kindly, very kindly, just for the oh, consideration of God Almighty and, and the congregation that comes here to church. Can we just put this thing away today no. and then go and maybe have lunch? I'm invoking my uh, constitutional right. Mr. Delaney asks Mr. Hartford to put the sign away and leave, but Mr. Hartford refuses and states that he's invoking his constitutional rights. Traditionally, quintessential public forums, such as streets, sidewalks, and parks, have enjoyed strong First Amendment protections against government interference with speech. As the Supreme Court explained in the 1983 case of Perry Education Association versus Perry Local Educators Association, quote, in places which by long tradition or by government fiat have been devoted to assembly and debate, the rights of the state to limit expressive activity are sharply circumscribed. However, this does not mean that the government can never regulate speech in public forums. And in certain instances, the right to free expression can be restricted in traditional public forums, including sidewalks. While legislation restricting speech based on its content is rarely constitutional, such a law can be upheld if, quote, its regulation is necessary to serve a compelling state interest and that it is narrowly drawn to achieve that end. 
The Supreme Court calls this test strict scrutiny, and it is the highest standard that the government must meet when arguing that a law restricting speech is constitutional. States may also regulate the time, place, and manner of expression within traditional public forums if the regulations are content neutral and are, quote, narrowly tailored to serve a significant government interest and leave open ample alternative channels of communication. This standard is less challenging to satisfy than strict scrutiny and is therefore known as intermediate scrutiny. In the 1989 case of Ward v. Rock Against Racism, the Supreme Court clarified that time, place, and manner restrictions do not need to be the least intrusive means of furthering the legitimate government interest at play, unlike content-based regulations that must be the least speech-restrictive means available in order to survive strict scrutiny. Here, a court would likely conclude that Mr. Hartford was well within his First Amendment rights to stand on a public sidewalk and hold up a sign expressing his religious views, even when his sign was clearly directed at practitioners of a church with conflicting religious beliefs. It is difficult to imagine a situation where the government could prohibit Mr. Hartford from expressing his particular beliefs based on their content, and, as Mr. Hartford carefully selected the time and location of his communication to target the Calvary Chapel congregation with his message, any time, place, or manner restriction against Mr. Hartford holding up his sign would most likely fail to leave ample alternative channels to reach his audience, even if the government could identify a significant government interest that the regulation of his speech could advance. Yeah, I know, but there's also a thing to where there's a legal thing that says that you become legally, if you become a public nuisance, and we feel that it is, I can call Chattanooga. Well, then call the one, police. There it and is. then say that if you I'm are breaking the law, arrest me. Uh, you're making a scene right now, aren't you? Sergeant, am I correct in my, my, my understanding, sir, of the law? If he and I are having a problem with people and we're causing a, a upright and a scene in front of people, is that... Would you mind if I talk to him? Uh, yeah, you're welcome to talk to him, but you ain't gonna get nowhere. No, no, I mean, I'm ready to have a Bible study. Well, then come on inside and talk to me. Just get your Bible. Uh, let's go open well, it up. Well, I, I, uh, well, I don't want to play into your hand because well, I know what happens when I go in there. Then I become uh, have subject you ever been to in your, here before? your. Yes, you have, haven't you? Yeah, I have. Well, I know exactly who you are, bro. You don't think I remember who you are? Why can't we just go inside and have a civil conversation, you and I, that we were not out here making a fool? Uh, well, when I get done doing what I'm doing, I'll call you or email you. Just leave me your contact information, and we'll go from there. No. This is not working well for me. Okay, well, I'm sorry. You should have uh, put your house on more solid ground. Listen, man, can you give me a Did you just not let me listen to that? Oh, I'm asking you as a man to man. That's all I'm asking you for. There's no reason to No, no, no. This. Preach from the rooftops. Well, number one, you're on the street corner. Okay, it was wrong. Well, and your message is going to fall into your ears here. Okay. It might, but it also might fall on some good ground and, and bring forth so, fruit. So listen, man. Oh, Nobody no, here's paying no, any no, attention to your side. Okay. I think I'm making a big uh, oh, uh, yeah. demonstration. Did you see that? Tired. Never one, you don't have my permission to film me, so don't film me anymore. I can film you all I want. I said no, sir. That's assault. Okay. Hey, no. don't touch my stuff. Get off my property. Please, I'm not on your property. Get off my property, man. I'm not on your property. Listen, man, leave. Hey, sir, can you call a district car? I think we have a public uh, problem here right now with me and him. Thank you, sir. Thank you, You sir. should get a better job, man. Just walk away. Mr. Delaney claims that Mr. Hartford is being a public nuisance by standing on the sidewalk with his sign. And although some states recognize a criminal offense known as public nuisance, Tennessee is not one of them. Rather, under Tennessee law, nuisance cases typically involve a property owner using their land in such a way that it annoys or disturbs another property owner's free use of their property, or which renders its ordinary use or physical occupation uncomfortable. Although Section 29-3-101 of the Tennessee Code also states that criminal gangs that engage in certain activities may also constitute a nuisance. Although the statute does include as a nuisance, quote, any place in or upon which quarreling, drunkenness, fighting, breaches of the peace are carried on or permitted, this certainly would not apply to an individual holding a sign on a public sidewalk, as the nuisance must be a place and not a person. Mr. Delaney also states that Mr. Hartford is causing a scene, which would be more akin to a charge of disorderly conduct under Tennessee law. Section 39 
9-17-305 of the Tennessee Code makes it a criminal misdemeanor for an individual to engage in fighting or in violent or threatening behavior, refuse to obey an official order to disperse, issue to maintain public safety in dangerous proximity to a fire, hazard, or other emergency, or create a hazardous or physically offensive condition by any act that serves no legitimate purpose. In order to be convicted of disorderly conduct under this statute, an individual must engage in this conduct in a public place and intend to cause public annoyance or alarm, or the individual must make unreasonable noise that prevents others from carrying on lawful activities. Here, a court would likely conclude that Mr. Hartford was not engaging in the sort of activity that would rise to the level of disorderly conduct, as he appeared calm and was not yelling at people, blocking the sidewalk, making loud noises, using obscene gestures or signs, or directing fighting words at anyone, including the police officers. And he was not in any proximity to a fire, hazard, or other emergency. Okay. You shouldn't touch people's belongings that don't belong to you. This is it. Leave me your contact information. Well, we'll study the Bible. Contact information. We've had this conversation before, bro. Okay, well, contact me. We'll study the Bible. Hey, how are you doing? Name and badge number, please. You got an ID on you? Name and badge number. Elliot 1099. What's your, what's your, where's your ID, bro? Uh, that's irrelevant. Have I committed a crime? Trespassing. Yeah, you're trespassing. You're refusing to leave, man. Uh, I'm on public property. This is the yeah, sidewalk. Let me see your ID. This is a sidewalk. Let me see your ID. You need your ID you're gonna go to jail. Um, this is a sidewalk. I don't know what you're talking about. Dude, I need your ID. Okay, okay. Maybe you that was... you your ID or are you gonna go to jail? Um, I'm not gonna give you my ID. I have no this reason to. Put your arm behind your back. I'm on the sidewalk, so I don't see why I'm being arrested. This is not a stop an ID statute. Yeah, but you're refusing to give me your ID. What's your name? I'm not talking well, Why are you so upset at this church, man? I'm not upset at that. I'm trying to make a theological point that I wasn't allowed to make on your property. Officer He's James Elliott, who is a member of the Cavalry Chapel, claims that Mr. Hartford is trespassing on church so property and then places He's him under arrest when he refuses to provide his identification. Section 39-14-405 of the Tennessee Code states that, quote, A person commits criminal trespass if the person enters or remains on property or any portion of property without the consent of the owner. Because it is clear from the footage that Mr. Hartford was on a public sidewalk throughout the encounter and not on church property, a court would almost certainly conclude that Mr. Hartford was not trespassing at the time Officer Elliot approached him, as the fact that the adjacent property owner didn't like his presence in front of their church is insufficient to sustain a conviction under the trespassing statute. Likewise, a court would probably find that Mr. Hartford could not be constitutionally arrested for refusing to identify himself in this context. While Section 7-3-505 of the Tennessee Code allows any police or peace officer of a metropolitan government to arrest an individual who does not produce or give identification when the officer or asks for it for the purpose of issuing them a citation or civil warrant, Tennessee does not have a stop and identify statute that requires citizens to identify themselves during Terry stops. And even if it did, Officer Elliott would have no articulable True. basis to argue that he had a reasonable suspicion that Mr. Hartford was involved in criminal activity, as Mr. Hartford was simply exercising his First Amendment rights on a public street. Tennessee's obstruction statute, which is codified in Section 39-16-602 of the Tennessee Code, similarly does not allow officers to arrest an individual for refusing to identify themselves, as the statute only makes it an offense for an individual to, quote, intentionally prevent or obstruct anyone known to the person to be a law enforcement officer from effecting a stop, frisk, halt, arrest, or search of any person by using force against the law enforcement officer or another. Mr. Hartford clearly could not be convicted of this offense for refusing to identify himself because he did not use any sort of force against Officer Elliot or anyone else, and his actions did not prevent Officer Elliot from conducting a stop, frisk, halt, arrest, or search. Therefore, a court would very likely hold that Officer Elliot could not legally arrest Mr. Hartford for trespassing or for refusing to identify himself upon demand. Are you, are you, are you going to stop this here? No, no, no. I'd like to do a search and outlook card in the bottom. Yeah. I'll go talk to you. You know what? 
After arresting Mr. Hartford, Officer Elliott confiscated his camera and his sign and took him to jail, two where he was work. held long enough to miss two days of work. I'll Mr. Hartford was eventually right. charged with criminal Anybody trespass, but work. the charge was ultimately dismissed after nearly a year. On February 7, 2022, Mr. Hartford filed right. a pro se federal lawsuit against Officer Elliott for deprivation of civil right. rights. In his handwritten complaint, Mr. Hartford stated that he had pled guilty yes, to a trespassing charge involving the same church in 2016, and that the district attorney for that case advised him that he was allowed to be on the sidewalk surrounding the church, move? which is why he they chose to, to stand there. there with his sign. He also well, alleged that Officer, Officer Elliott claimed in his police DA, report right? that Mr. Hartford was standing in the church parking lot when he actually remained on the sidewalk throughout. As of the date of this episode, I Mr. Hartford's Mr. lawsuit Harper is still wins. pending. Overall, Officer Elliott gets an F, F for misusing his authority as a police officer to censor violence. Mr. Hartford's speech, arresting Mr. Hartford for exercising his right to refuse to identify himself, and allowing his biases as a member of Calvary exactly. Chapel to interfere with his duties as a police officer. Mr. Hartford was well within his First Amendment rights to stand on a public sidewalk and hold a sign communicating a religious sentiment, and Officer Elliott's interference with this expression was tantamount to unconstitutional office. government interference with the right to free speech. Officer Elliott's connection with the Calvary Chapel also Don't makes stop. his involvement in this situation questionable, and regardless of the actual motivations for his actions, to an outsider, it would likely appear that he arrested Mr. Hartford exactly. because the leaders of his church wanted him to, or because he and his church disagreed with his religious views. It is difficult to imagine that the church and Officer Elliott would have taken the same actions if Mr. Hartford's sign had expressed religious views that were in agreement with the church's teachings. And this incident demonstrates how easily police misconduct slow, can lead man. to government censorship of speech and ideas. Mr. Hartford gets yes. an A+. Plus for remaining calm and courteous throughout the encounter, respectfully yes. practicing his right to free expression, tactfully refusing to identify himself when he was not required to do so, and following up with appropriate legal action. In addition to exercising the self-control necessary to remain respectful throughout his interactions with church leaders and Officer Elliot, Mr. Hartford demonstrated real courage by asserting his rights and refusing to relinquish them, even when threatened with arrest. It is clear that Mr. Hartford's religious beliefs are important to him, yep. and I commend him for maintaining a clear head when his expression of those beliefs were wrongfully stifled. It seems that Mr. Hartford has a strong argument that Officer Elliott wrongfully arrested him, and it will be interesting to see if he can succeed in his federal claims without legal representation. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out my second channel for right. even more police Thank interaction you. content. Educate yourself on law as well. Uh, wow, that was a good one. All right. And uh, hope y'all enjoyed it. I know I did. Start getting kind of emotional. You know, must be nice. It's a, there's a, you know, I'm personally more of a spiritual person. I do believe in God, but I'm more of a spiritual person. I really don't get into religion of any type. Uh, but uh, that's one thing that, I mean, not all pastors or leaders are bad, but, uh, there are definitely, there are some that are, uh, wolves in sheep clothing. And you saw how his whole entire demeanor changed when he wouldn't get in his way. Could you imagine what could have happened behind that guy? I mean, behind closed doors with that guy. They could have beat him up and then say he tried to assault him, okay? And then the police officer, he would have came up and agreed with the preacher because he was the preacher's flunky, ignoring every single oath he took as a police officer, abusing his power, trying to show off to his pastor, you know? Um, you know that's sad, you know? The temptation of, to abuse power is always there, but, you know, just because you can do something don't mean you should do something. All right. Anyway, hope you enjoy it. I know I got riled up on this one, and I'll wrap y'all later. Peace.